what is good with y'all boys, man? CGODB. Um, hopefully, y'all have had a blessed start to your week. I know I've just been good myself. I've been chilling. Uh, hopefully, everything's been smooth at your work, at school, with your girlfriend, whatever the fuck, man. Hopefully, everything's been good. But tonight, um, I'm just going to be analyzing this AFC West division, which, uh, you know, my beloved Chargers play in. It's, it's it's slated to be the toughest division in football next season. And usually it's usually it's up there, even when it's not. Usually it's still up there being one of the hardest to play in. Um, you know, just because of how dominant the Chiefs have been um, as of late. And then also the Broncos um, in the mid-2010s, you know, with Peyton Manning, they are pretty nasty. And then the Chargers had their run um in the late 2000s but yeah i mean it's it's overall it's an interesting division because uh we're starting to see kind of like a little bit of a power shift you know um the raiders are starting to pick their squad up and uh you know they're looking to improve from last season and the chargers um they always have high expectations and a good team on paper every season but it's it's just a matter of staying healthy and just putting everything together but um, I like their chances. I like their odds to make it out this division and hopefully, you know, make it to the AFC championship game. That would be a big step for the squad. Uh, the Broncos, they also got a new quarterback, um, you know, Russ, Russell Wilson, really great quarterback, really smart. You know, we all know Russell Wilson. He's proven at this point, but he did show um, slight signs of, of his, you know, decrease in play last season. He just didn't look like the same Russell Wilson, albeit that him and uh, him and Pete Carroll were kind of falling out and stuff like that. So I'm going to give Russ the benefit of the doubt. I expect him to, to, to come out balling for the, for the Broncos this season. So, I mean, everyone's got – everyone's going to be on their A game. Um, the Chiefs are, of course, going to be pretty good too. But uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm dive deeper into this right now though. Let's get into this. So, so this is what Jordan Dahani, Dahani, this is what he graded free agency, uh, this off season. So, the Broncos they got an A. So they acquired uh, biggest acquisitions: Russell Wilson, Randy Gregory. Um, so the Broncos, I mean, I I think that they're definitely gonna start out hot. They may start out the hottest in the division uh, in the AFC West, but I expect them to flame out towards the middle of the year, or at least teams will start to figure them out more. So um, I, I think the Broncos are going to start out well, but they're going to start to kind of flame out towards the middle of the year. The Chargers, J.C. Jackson, Khalil Mack were our biggest acquisitions, and it was just like like boom, boom, like super quick, these pickups. And it surprised a lot of fans, including me, because usually the Chargers aren't that aggressive in the offseason, but they showed that they mean it this time. So they're trying to, you know, fill in uh, Staley's guys that he, that he wants for his scheme so he can run it properly, unlike last season when the run game was giving up five five yards of pop. So he can't be doing that. But, uh, yeah, there's also some underrated signings, Sebastian Joseph Day, Austin Johnson. Uh, Gerald Everett, et cetera, et cetera. But um, then also drafting Zion Johnson. And then the Raiders, they picked up Devontae Adams. They got Chandler Jones. Also, those are two of the biggest acquisitions. Um, the Raiders, I expect them to be above average next season. I, I don't think they have a Super Bowl squad by any means. I think Derek Carr, although he's a good quarterback, I just don't think he's – He's that guy to, to take them all the way or at least even take them into a second-round exit in the playoffs. I just don't think he's got that in him. He's going to have to show me first. But um, the Raiders, they definitely got a pretty good squad. And their secondary doesn't look too great. They have some other holes on their team. It's not perfect by any means, but uh, they look pretty solid, though. They look pretty solid. Um yeah, I mean, A- minus for the for the offseason, pretty good for the Raiders. Kansas City Chiefs, they got a B-. minus. Um, Tyreek Hill, which is their biggest weapon, he went to the Dolphins. He got traded, so 
Um, yeah, I mean, the Chiefs, they lost a big-time weapon, and uh, that was, like, that's a key component. He's such – Tyreek Hill is such a key component for the Chiefs because he always had – like, Mahomes always had that in his back pocket. He could just break the game wide open with just a deep ball in the Tyreek. Uh, or even like a slant or something like that. You could take it all the way, which we've seen him do on the Chargers. And he's tormented the Chargers over the years too with punt returns, you name it, man. So I'm glad he's gone. Um, overall, though, I, I think we split with everyone in the division. Um, we could possibly beat the Chiefs twice if we're on our A game. And we could beat the Broncos twice if we're on our A game. Or not the Broncos, but the Raiders. But the Broncos, usually we split with them no matter how good their team is. So I expect to lose at least once in Denver, maybe in Kansas City as well. Um, the Raiders, it's kind of a toss-up, but it, it really depends, man. I, overall, I think we split with everyone in division. Hopefully the Raiders and Broncos help us out by getting some wins on the Chiefs because usually they don't help us out in that aspect when it comes to uh, – you know, the rivalry within the division and playoff seating. But yeah, let's go to this next one. So these were just uh, – obviously, it's only going up to 2019, but 2020 and 2021 were the Chiefs as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, as you guys can see, the Chargers, we haven't been AFC West champs since the late 2000s, man. It's been like 2009, 2008, 2007, around there. Uh, Yeah, so – like I said, hopefully this power shift comes in and the Chargers were on top of that division. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully it just shifts in our favor, man. We take control because I'm tired of seeing the Chiefs up here controlling everything, man. And um, yeah, I mean, that's just I'm just showing you guys like the history of the division. And this one right here, AFC West has some crazy star power. So as you can see, Bosa. Darwin James, J.C. Jackson, Eckler, Mike Williams. And then uh, I don't know why they got Herbert on there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, as you can see, just it's just insane. Then there's Chandler Jones, Max Crosby. We got Renfro, Devontae Adams, Waller, et cetera, et cetera, man. This, this division is fucking stacked. And I think it's going to be so entertaining. Um, I, I think that the Chargers, I think they got what it takes, man. And, and I, I I don't know if I'm tripping or not saying this, but if if the guys can somewhat stay healthy, I know I know it's football, people are going to get injured regardless, but if they can somewhat stay healthy, keep, keep uh, at least our old line, you know, stay intact for most of the season, and if we go into a playoffs rolling, I think this team, the floor can honestly be like an AFC championship level team. And, um, you know, call me crazy, but if Staley, you know, if, if he works his magic and his scheme um, is everything that's that's worked up to be, I, I think it's going to be great, man. I think it's going to be great. Um, as you can see, Chiefs right there, Chris Jones, Frank Clark, Broncos, Bradley Chubb, Pat Sertain, Justin Simmons. So the Broncos got a pretty nasty defense as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just crazy star power within the division. Um, this was DraftKings. Th these were their odds on, on the, um, you know, within the AFC West. So they got the K uh, Kansas City Chiefs is the favorite at plus 175. The Chargers, we come in at second at 220. The Broncos right behind us, 260. And then you got the Raiders at 650. So, um overall i mean i can't be too mad at these odds obviously got the chiefs at the very top because they've controlled it the past like seven years so um big respect to us putting this at second even though we didn't make the playoffs last season and surprisingly the raiders they have some pretty crazy odds right there i would that wouldn't be a bad bet from a betting standpoint just looking at those odds and realistically and how much the raiders are you know, they're not that much farther away from these other three teams in terms of talent. So um, that's not a bad bet, actually. But these were just their DraftKings odds on who's going to win the division. Um, if I were to set them, 
I had to put the Chiefs first. I had to put us second, and I put the Raiders third, and then the Broncos last. I'm sorry, but the Broncos just got to put it together for me to see it and believe it, man, because I don't think they're going to be better than the Raiders next season, so I just don't see that happening. Uh, AFC West pass, pass rushing duos, Crosby and Chandler Jones. Whew. Man, that's going to be crazy. Max Crosby is a complete beast. Chandler Jones is a monster as well. Uh, John Jones' brother, you know, he's he's a monster. That's going to be a crazy duo. But here's the best one in the, in the league right here. And in the AFC West, we got Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack. So I expect these two boys to go completely insane. Khalil Mack being a former MVP and looking like he's in great shape right now coming off the injury. And uh, Joey Bosa, just you know, he's always been like a top five defensive end. Um, in recent history, so then Rand, Randy Gregory, Bradley Chubb. Uh, that one's eh, it's eh, it's all right. Bradley Chubb's nice, but we'll see what Gregory does. Um, Chris Jones, Frank Clark, you know, pretty solid as well, especially Chris Jones. Um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of just being a moral for every team, too. Like, if you look at most teams in the league, almost everyone has like a really nasty pass rushing duo uh, coming off the edge. So, yeah, I mean, just the league's getting more and more talented. AFC West wide receiver duos. We got Keenan and Mike, Corlin Sutton, Jerry Judy, Devonta Adams, Hunter Renfro, Tyreek Hill, Juju Smith-Schuster. So, obviously, the Chiefs don't got Tyreek anymore. Um, so, yeah, it's just uh, Juju and... Um, I don't know, Pringle or something like that. Or whoever their number two or three receiver is. But, yeah, I mean, Keenan and Mike, man. I'm going to need Keenan. I'm going to need him to, to get a lot of touchdowns this season. I know his yards. I don't expect him to, to hit over, like, like 1,200 yards or anything crazy like that. I expect, at most, I expect Keenan to have, like, 1,050 yards. If he can get, like, eight touchdowns, that would be, like, really sweet. Mike Williams, I expect him to get more yards, probably, like, 1,200. And Herbert are really connecting. Then I could see them getting 14. But, uh, I mean, you guys let me know, though. Who's your favorite receiver duo out of the AFC West? Um, I'm at the road with the Chargers right here, you know. The, uh, the Raiders duo looks pretty nasty, too, though. I'm not going to lie, especially since Devontae and Carr are college teammates. They're just different stadiums. We got SoFi, new stadium, Allegiant, new stadium uh, down here in Vegas. Um, but, yeah, I mean, overall, I think the two hardest stadiums to play in in the AFC West got to be the Broncos and the Chiefs. Probably, most likely, the Chiefs because um, it gets loud there. I'm not going to lie. It's just a little article right here. Just going to read this through uh, to wrap up the video. But, yeah, I mean, these are just some takeaways from training camp. Josh Palmer said that he was kind of a breakout candidate. He looked really nice. Zion Johnson, he looked very fundamentally sound for a rookie. Jerry Tillery on the verge of getting cut. He just hasn't proved himself the past couple of years. And uh, his, you know, his draft stock can only keep him on the team for so long, so. Yeah, but they're saying it's not much of a surprise that Palmer is considered Borquez's breakout player. The writing was on a wall in 2021 for Palmer to break out and become the team's number three receiver. Palmer has shined in practice, making highlight-worthy catches despite tight coverage against a talented Chargers defensive back group. Then um says it's probably not a surprise that Johnson, the 2022 first-round pick, is having a good camp either. He was pretty much considered a sure thing and is pretty much already locked down in the right guard position. Some assumed Tillery would be a starter in 2022, but he hasn't had a good camp so far as being outplayed by Morgan Fox, Joe Gaziano, and others. Some speculate a trade could be in order for Tillery if he continues to disappoint. So yeah, I mean, it's just sad, man. So, uh, sucks, but Tillery just kind of have been kind of lazy just haven't been improving on your game uh kind of a low motor guy honestly and we're just gonna have to end up trading you for um a complimentary pick 
But yeah. Then we got this where Bleacher Report ranked the Chargers this season. So this time around, Bleacher Report has the Chargers not only going 11 and 6 on the season, but the record would also land them at the top of the division. According to the predictions, the entire AFC West will finish with a record above 500. The Chiefs and Broncos are both predicted to go 10 and 7, while the Raiders finish last behind them with a record of 9 and 8. So why does the NFL analyst blah 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 defense? So he has the Chargers at the top because of defense. Uh, the Chargers defense faltered down the stretch of the playoff push last season. They allowed 34, 41, and 35, 35 points in three of their final four games. So yeah, that's true. Last season, the defense fell apart. That spurred a huge spending spree this offseason with veteran edge rusher Khalil Mack and cornerback J.C. Jackson entering the fold. The Chargers have a more balanced distribution of talent on their defense than last season. They won't need to solely rely on superstars Joey Bosa or Derwin James to create turnovers or big plays. The upside of this unit is now as good as any in the league. So, you speaking facts right here, man. Um, even the death got a little bit better as well. And then add in some star talent and stuff like that. You know, Khalil and JC always helps. But even just making some smart pickups, you know, Austin Johnson, Sebastian Joseph Day to help out, you know, one of the worst run defensives in the league because that's what they do best is stop the run. So it's just attacking our weaknesses. Our linebacker group is pretty weak. Um, and our right tackle is not the greatest, but... Overall, there's not too many holes on this roster, so I can understand why analysts are loving us. But as a Charger fan, I'm not getting too too crazy over it because we already, already know this team, man. And they can throw a curveball at you and surprise you. So, yeah. I mean, overall, though, you guys let me know what you think. Personally, you know, I'm going to have us taking first place. Uh, If I'm not being biased, I got I got the Chiefs. Number two, us. Three, Raiders. Four, Broncos. You guys let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully this video was entertaining. And, um, yeah, just let me know your thoughts. I'll converse with you guys. But, yeah, take it easy, guys. CGODB signing out. Peace.